بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى has given us this مبارك دين all these bounties so that we obey Allah سبحانه وتعالى and fulfill our requirement in this very short life as a believer we are everus all the time to make sure that we get it right because we only got one chance we got one opportunity an opportunity of a lifetime literally to get it right previously the four asbabu mentioned the fifth suburb and means where deen is circumstantial it is based on certain conditions is where deen becomes a routine it is just a habit it is just a routine Malana Ilyasuna used to say Jo jo zamana dungut ke baad hota hai Deeni umur apni ruh Aur haqiqat se khali hota hai That as time elapses Successively Through the passing of time The spirit of Deen And its reality Started leaving the Ummah so whether it was previous Anbiya alayhi was salam when the Nabi left then the Ruh, the Spirit, the Haqiqat, the reality of Deen starts leaving and Mahaz Rusum and that Deen, those A'mal eventually become a Rasam and it becomes a custom so we have to be very particular to make sure that all the A'mal of Deen we're not just doing it for the sake of a formality but we're doing it for the sake of reality so Al-Jannatu ahakrabu ila ahadikum min shiraki na'lihi wa naru mithlu dhalika that Jannat is closer to you than your shoelace means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ad-deenu yusrun has made deen very easy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made Jannat very easy also now it's up to us to decide which route we want to take. Somebody came to one Buzruk and says, you know what, I don't have istiqamat. I make a mudakara, discuss with me the different methodologies and techniques so I can get istiqamat in deen. The Buzruk said, there's no need for that question. If you want to know, go ask a businessman. If you want to know, go ask a, uh, a doctor. Ask everybody in every profession or business how do they have istiqamat? Why are they on time for their job? What's motivating them? He said, if your motivation was Allah and His Rasul, you wouldn't need any other motivation. If the reality entered your heart, like the businessman has understood, I need to open up my business so that I can generate an income. He's got that in mind. Likewise, if you had akhirat in mind and you had deen in mind and there was no need for a muzakara to motivate a person to do amal because automatically Allah and His Rasul in itself is a motivation. So deen is easy if we got the right motive, we got the right objective, we got the right ilm, we sit in under the right ulama, we spending in the, our time in the company of the pious servants of Allah and we get the right story. They say the Japanese had a factory where they were producing soaps. But the problem was that in the box of the soap, some soaps, there was a malfunction and there wasn't a soap in the box. So the technician spent millions of dollars to develop a machine that would sense which box had a soap and which box didn't have a soap. So they took countless hours and resources to solve this problem. They said the Indians were faced with the same problem. All they did was put a fan. They put a fan. So Jannat is easy. Now it's up to us decide, to decide how easy do we want to make it. Otherwise Shaitan, Nafs, Environment, etc. is there all the time perpetually overwhelming us and try to take us away from our focus. And sometimes when contentment comes in, then a person starts taking it easy and relaxed and not giving the attention that is needed to maximize on that opportunity. There was a barber once, he was cutting his client's hair and said, should I not show you a foolish child, a very ignorant child? So the client said, uh, show me. So he called the youngster outside. 
and he offered the youngster a five rand coin and a 20 rand note. So the boy, boy looked at the note and looked at the coin and chose the coin. So the barber laughed, the client laughed, and the boy left. So after the client was finished, he came outside and he seen the child, the boy, the youngster having ice cream and said, oh youngster, how could you be so foolish enough that a coin, although it's heavier, it has less value. A note, although it's lighter, has more value. Why don't you just take the note? And if you know numbers, 20 is more than 5. Obviously, in the, this person's mind, he evaluated the situation that the youngster cannot differentiate. So the youngster said, Papa, Papa, Cha 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 Cha, the game will be over then. The game will be over then. Means every day, the barber calls me and makes a fool of me. And this ice cream that I'm eating is because of the five rand that I get every day from the barber. He thinks he's making me a fool. Actually, I'm making him a fool. So it shouldn't be that shaitan has fooled us. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of our life has passed. But our entire deen is just a routine. It is just a formality. I do a, a, a umrah, a formality of just doing the, the, the clocking in the numbers. I'm reading my salat, clocking the numbers. I'm, I'm finishing my tasbihat, clocking in the numbers. I'm making tilawat of Quran, I'm just clocking in the numbers. It's just about doing the amal, finishing the amal, but not making sure that the am amal is done how it should have been according to the requisites and the demand. We're telling Allah, Ya Allah, I'm worshiping, worshiping you how I should be worth worshiping you. I'm fulfilling the requirements of ibadah. Then, now, Ya Allah, I did. Malana Umar Sapalam Puri Rahmatullah used to say, he used to translate it, O oh Allah, we'll do what you want us to do, now you will do what we ask you to do. So, this is a gift, Ya Allah, this is the ibadat, we're doing it how you wanted us to do it. Now you will do what we request, you, whatever our needs are, Ya Allah, you will fulfill it. And because Allah make us maaf, our mind and our attention is towards dunya, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim, Quran is teaching us now when you ask Allah, we are thinking, if I ever need, what's my worldly need? What's my worldly requirements? Whereas Quran is teaching us that now when you have a wish, when a golden opportunity comes, then your wish should be hidayat. Because the greatest need and necessity for any individual on earth is hidayat. If you get this right, you got everything right. If you got this wrong, everything is wrong. Like how we have understood, first you work, then you get paid. You first get married, then you get children. I need to first get Allah's happiness, then the results will come. So ibadah shouldn't be just for the formality. For example, somebody is looking forward to going to the Baytullah. MashaAllah, a person sees the Kaaba for the first time. He sees the Baytullah for the first time. What vigor, what fervor, what thrill, what enjoyment, what words cannot describe what a person goes through when he sees the Baytullah for the first time. So that's a very good, it's a brilliant experience. But a person is reading Salat every day in a Salatu Ma'arajul Mu'min. So every day we got an opportunity to make that Ma'raj, to be in front of Allah. The Kaaba is the house of Allah. That's a similitude. It's, it's a sign of Allah. A Musalli is making Ma'raj to Allah. So we should have some jazba, some zeal when we perform in our salat. Example, a person is making tawbah istighfar. So he's in astaghfirullah. But in that istighfar, he's not making tawbah. 
He's saying the words of Tawbah, but he's not feeling the regret and the remorse. We are, we are not deterring anybody from doing any amal. The idea and the purpose of this mudakara is that when we doing those amal, so if a person is making dhikr, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, he doesn't have the qualities, carry on doing it. Carry on doing it. The idea is now we need to perfect those amal. For example, the person goes to Medina Munawara. The shock, the anticipation, the ecstasy a person gets when he just enters Medina Munawara, then when he sees the Green Dome, then we enters Masjid al-Nabawi. Every stage is a different form of ecstasy, enjoyment, pleasure. Why? Because we're anticipating that mulaqat, that ziyara, that salam. On the opposite side of the coin, and to understand this, we'll narrate an incident of Shah Muhaddis Dahlui, Rahimullah, who always had a desire to go stay, to go stay and reside in Medina Munawara. So one day he made ziyarat of Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam. So he was planning to relocate, and he seen Nabi Ali Salam in a dream. Nabi Ali Salam advised him and told him. That, oh Shah Sab, remember that person who is staying in Medina Munawara and he's not close, he's not practicing, he's not applying my Sunnah in his life, then he's far away from me, he's distance away from me. But that person who is staying far away, a far distance away from Medina Munawara, but he is making amal on the sunnah. Then remember, he is close to me. Remember, he is close to me. So we need to be checking that we are doing these amal, but is the haqiqat and the reality of these amal in our lives. For example, we have a platter of apples or fruits. So a person looks at the apple, looks at the grapes, looks at the watermelon and he consumes it, he gets the deliciousness, the sweetness of that. But there's the same platter of fruits, but its imitation is fake. So if a person decides, now I want to eat that fake apple, he might just lose a tooth off. Why? Because it's a, it's a fake apple, it's not a genuine apple. We have a rose which is genuine, you can appreciate the texture, you can appreciate the fragrance compared to a fake rose. So we are doing amal, but the requirements, a person who's doing a Formula One race, he knows firstly, he needs to finish the race, he needs to not make any mistakes, because one mistake can cost him his life, forget losing the race. One mistake can make him lose his life. I'm making tilawat of Qur'an, I'm doing these amal, but I need to be cognizant of this fact that I need to be doing these amal how it should be done, according to the requisites, according to the requirements how it should be done. Otherwise, a person will take his own opinion, he will analyze the situation and decide this is the best thing, which the criteria is completely wrong. It's it's, 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 he's on the wrong route, he's on the wrong destination, he's, he's, he's forgotten his objective. There were four blind people, so a circus was in town, so they decided let's go. And uh, uh, the elephant, we've, elephants were very rare in that place, so let's go and get exposure to an elephant. So the first blind person, when he came back, people asked him from the village, what was your opinion of an elephant? He said an elephant is a bark of a tree because he felt the legs. Second blind person, what's an elephant? He said it's a table because he felt the back. Somebody asked the third elephant, uh, third uh, blind person, he said it's a rope. Fourth blind person, he said it's a wall. So all of them were there, but their opinion was completely wrong. It wasn't even close to the real thing. It shouldn't be on the day of Qiyamat. We come with Deen, but it's nothing of Deen. And that's because a person who's desirous will, will read Quran, but how it should be read Quran, make tilawat how it should be. 
They say it was eight time and uh, this person needed his trouser to be trimmed. It was too long. He went to his mother, told his mother that I need this trou trouser trimmed. She said, tomorrow's Eid, I have to do a lot of work. Please, Muff, I can't do it. Then he went to his sister. He made the same request. She said the same thing. You know what? I'm too busy. Tomorrow's Eid. I got this to do and that to do. Then he went to his wife. She said the same thing. So at night, depressed, he went to go to sleep. The mother thought, oh, my bichara son came to me. Let me trim his trousers. So she went, she took the trousers, she trimmed it. The sister, hey, my beloved brother came to me. He had a requisition. I never fulfilled it. Let me do what I can. She trimmed it. The wife, also, my beloved husband came to me. He had a requisition. I never fulfilled it. By the morning, he had a bamuda. So we are trimming in deen, we are, we, are, we are cutting out deen, what suits us and what we think it is, and just making it a formality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us of making this deen just a routine, just a formality. The amal for today, which is sunnah, is that after we read our fajr salat, to sit in the place where we read our salat, wait till sunrise, although it's Ramadan now and people might feel it's difficult, but let us revive this dead sunnah. And then you read your Salatul Ishraq. Man salla al Fajr fi jama'atin. Whoever reads Salatul Fajr. And then, Qa'ada yadhkur Allah hatta tatlu al shamsu. They sit in the place where they read the Salat. They sat in the place. If, if it was a time where masajid were open and you, the men in the masjid, the masturat in their place, they musalla until some sunrise. Thumma salla rak'atain. And then they read two rakat Salat. كانت له كأجر حجة وعمرة. They will get the reward of a Hajj and Umrah. In another riwayat, متقبلتين a accepted مقبول Hajj and Umrah. Just for this one amal. In another riwayat, خرج من ذنوبه كيوم ولدته أمه لا ذنب له. That by the time that Salat is completed, he's like a newborn child. All his sins are forgiven. Another riwayat, Lam tamassa jildahu annar. That the fire of Jahannam is made haram for him. The dua for today morning and evening dua is, A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamati min shadri ma khalaq. A person should read this dua, Three times morning and evening. A sahabi came to the Nabi of Allah and said, Ya Rasul Allah, ma laqitu min aqrabin ladagatni al-bariha. That last night, I had an incident with a scorpion. So Nabi alayhi salam said that you should read this here three times. And he said, whoever recites this three times, lam tadurrahu humatun tilka layla. That no insect bite or sting will harm him. So we should read it in the morning, read it in the evening. As a swell used to say that it was a habit in our family that we used to read it all the time. It was our habit. That one of the kids, one of the children were playing and they were bitten, they were stung. فَلَمْ تَجِدْ لَهَا أَلَمًا But she did not have any pain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. وَآخِرُ تَعْوَانَا عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ